First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for attending today. Thank you very much. And thank you to Sherry for opening your home. Appreciate that. So we have a presentation here, uh, Trends in Water Features, which is a little bit misleading in that uh, it, it's not really a trend as much it is, as it is uh, more of a paradigm shift in, in what we've seen uh, as far as client-driven uh, design requests. And a lot of what we do is, uh, first of all, anything for those that aren't familiar with water features, uh, it's pretty much anything with moving water that offers an aesthetic enhancement. Uh, typically located in the garden, but it can be elsewhere as far as a water wall or something else, uh, interior, smaller interior uh, funnels. So, uh, here's just a, a, a fairly simple koi pond. It's, it's somewhat compact. You know, some of this is uh, a little uh, just good photography, which is uh, always highly recommended. So is that a residence or is that a commercial? Th th this is residential. The majority of our work is residential. Um, that's not to say that you know any any given year uh, the right commercial projects come along. Usually, commercial projects are budget driven, and we're the type of firm that is much more artistic and detailed and often we're, we're, we price ourselves out of that market. It, it really, the residential market, it's a particular eye that, that a client has that is really looking for a, a natural look or a clean look and uh, that, that we can certainly offer. Here we see a water wall, indoor. This oh, is sorry, go back to the water wall, sorry. Yeah, so and, and, and if there's any questions, please just stop. Use your I've, got, I've got quite a few slides, so I'm going to move. Uh, yeah, so this quick. is an interior, and the water comes from the top and goes down into a trough? Correct, okay. correct. Yeah, this is an interior water. So it's some foyer? Is that yes, this is a, a foyer for a, for a condominium. Uh, oh, wow. A condominium, so is it, have you, did you have problems with the connections? Oh, uh, that's funny that you mentioned that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of what we do, uh, a, a lot of what we do is, uh, we, we do with stainless steel when it comes to a lot of the, uh, a lot of the interior stuff just to just to make sure that there's minimal problems if any yeah room. when i was a builder my past like we did one for buzz hoffman mm -hmm. liquid homestead mm -hmm. it was i think we ended up calling you for help at the end so it was quite the yeah interesting. They're, they're, <laughs> everybody thinks they can do them and, and they're a lot of them are just train wrecks they're yes. it's, it's bad mold issues all kinds of leak issues uh, can be very problematic when not done correctly uh, this is uh, on the larger end, uh, commercial development and wheeling. Uh, each of these waterfalls is approximately 50 feet wide. Wow. Uh, entrance to a, 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 I think there's eight buildings planned for that space. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of, uh, one of the larger projects in this area today, uh, a commercial application, again, driven by the, the client looking for a very particular look uh, entrance wise into the, into the development. And is that environmentally sensitive? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Here, 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 yeah. Here, here, what we're doing is uh, we're actually capturing a lot of the groundwater and pumping it back into the pond, so we're minimizing the amount of uh, consumption that the water feature it, they typically occupy. But you know, in this case, we're uh, we're pulling a lot of that water and putting it back in. Great. Uh, residential fountain. Uh, this is larger in scale. There'll be another picture uh, later down the road, but granite, all custom. Uh, uh, for anybody familiar with the Portillo residence, I know Sherry had done some work there. Yeah, this is the, the entrance fountain. He had a fountain prior to that, uh, which he absolutely hated, which it was hideous. Yeah. It, was a, it was a bad fountain for anybody that had seen it before. But he had seen this out uh, vacationing in California, and he liked it. Sent us out there. We took all the measurements, came up with a design based off of that, uh, and then facilitated it. Amazing. Much better than the original. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a so, so Jason, in that fountain, did you make the fountain portion? I mean, the stone. So this, it, it's all granite, hand carved. It was hand carved in China. So there's, there's, I think, 100, 105 pieces that needed to be assembled. Uh, but the hydraulics are was substantial. The construction, what you don't see, is all the substructure that what it takes to do this. Uh, and there's a shot a little bit later down, later down the road in the presentation that illustrates some of the work that goes into that. But a lot, yeah. That's. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Wow. Nice. Can you also swim in that one? Is it really <laughs> <laughs> good for waiting? Roddy Dangerfield. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Here's just a, a, a smaller water feature in that you know, when we start to talk about uh, paradigms and, and trends, a lot of what we're seeing the demand for is, is water features in very small spaces. So what that requires is, is proper grading and or disguise of surrounding grade to allow you to have uh, waterfalls. 
in this case, it's a, a natural waterfall, which is a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky to disguise some of that green. But when done correctly, you, you can definitely pull it off in the in the smaller spaces. And how about in the city? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We've, um, we've but got, not on a rooftop. Some rooftops, yeah, yeah, and, and there's uh, I've, I've got a few illustrations coming out to, okay. to kind of uh, I have some uh, demo I forgot about that. <laughs> demonstrate, <laughs> demonstrate that. Uh, here's here's a rooftop. This is a, a very uh, simple water feature, and that it's just a an antique vase which the, the client had us plumb and uh, just circulate water. It just offers the, the audio aspect and uh, a simple simple piece that's singular in nature. More of a sculptural type water feature, a little more abstract. Wow. This this was part of a, a temporary display that we did for the Flower and Garden Show. But uh, formal in nature, just a simple reflecting pool, and we've got a, this this piece of granite is a substantial piece of stone, slightly overflowing. It's a, a very very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So it's actually a blue stone. Pennsylvania bluestone. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Yeah, all South of piece. Bluestone, yeah. Uh, this is the back side of that larger water feature and wheeling. Uh, just a really simple set of fountains, just offering a, a simple touch to it, uh, a walkway, uh, not being too dramatic for the space. I, I think it was uh, quite good for the back side of it. Sure. Reflecting pool. Uh, immediately adjacent to the house, which offers a lot of different views, and uh, it's nice because it also when you get the when you get the light involved, it offers a lot of the refraction of the light back in through the home, which is a really nice effect. Mm -hmm. Fountain placed into the wall. That there's actually the, the entry door is over here, uh, which the, the shot's a little bit tighter than I'd like, but uh, it, it gives you an idea of space and, and making sure that. The water feature is properly placed and properly sized for the area. This is a pondless water feature, which kind of comes back to one of the trends. You hear pondless quite a bit, where people are concerned about maintenance, which really isn't that big of a deal when you're talking about standing water. Here, what we have is there's a pump that sits in a vault and just circulates this. Uh, and the pondless does offer a little bit more room as far as what you need in space to create a nice natural area versus having a pond which is going to require a little bit more uh, depending on if you want to have fish, plants, different types of products. Do you do the maintenance also then? Like we do, absolutely. Yeah, we, do offer, uh, uh, we do offer maintenance throughout the greater Chicagoland area we, and I should also say that we work as far as the build design aspect uh, nationwide. So we have projects that we've done in California to Maine thus far. Here's a shot of a natural stream. Again, a lot of what a lot of what we hear clients looking for is just a very natural appearance, uh, and a lot of that comes down to making sure that there's dimension within streams and properly scaled stone, as well as uh, plantings within the stone pockets. Beautiful. Beautiful. <coughs> uh, just a series of fountains again, and you know we had talked about pondless basins. Oh, there it is. Fancy lasers going. Oh, no. uh, so, so what we have is uh, it's a, a pump here just recirculating with the water trickling through, giving a nice, very clean effect to the fountain. This would also be considered a pondless basin where it's just recirculating from a basin located on the ground. Uh, this, again, is more singular in nature where you can actually have this on a patio or on a rooftop where you have very limited space but you can have a very natural feel because the stone itself is very singular in nature. You don't need to grade around it to, to support the, the flow of the water. So how much space do you need for something like that, minimal? Depending on the size of the stone, I would say like a six by six base would, would really allow for a, for a nice, nice wow. vignette. Again, we start to talk about space and, and making sure that, that ponds and water features are are appropriately sized. You need to consider the existing landscape. I mean, here this is a, a project in Lake Forest where we had a significant canopy, so we wanted to make sure that it, it fit in well without being obtrusive to the to the remainder of the landscape. Sure. Beautiful. Uh, entry shot. This is actually Homer Glen, right down the road. We'd like to have a symposium here one day. Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> some wine in the hot tub. Swim that's, uh, that's, that's, that's a good shot. Sure. 
But uh, this is a relatively compact lot in that it's uh, 80 by 60 approximately. Wow. And there's a lot of mature trees, so there was a little bit of dancing that we needed to do to get that pond in. Uh, but we have a sunken hot tub, which offers views. Uh, and again, with, by sinking a hot tub, it's much less obtrusive than something that's raised and, and causes, you know, doesn't draw your eye to the hot tub rather than everything else that's going around. But it's nice, even when you're in a hot tub, you get to take advantage of different views that you otherwise wouldn't stand in. That's amazing. Is that your house, Jason? I wish. <laughs> no. Wow. Uh, again, just coming back to, to appropriate appropriate size and location, this is a, uh, it's an ideal view. Looks like a painting. Yeah. yeah. A painting that changes. Yeah. Uh, and, and this, you know, again, we're talking about orientation and, and placement of the water feature related to the home here. That this is a home that kind of comes back through this way and and leads back around. But what we have is uh, is a pathway that goes over a stream and then converts to a natural pathway, and then the pond continues on. Again, this is just a, an, an illustration of space where, where we have uh, the home which comes in on this side of the pond. It's about 20 feet off, uh, but it's, it, it, it gives you an idea of orientation of the water feature related to the home as well as that's the guest home uh, behind it. And then you have the entertaining space to bring people out and, and offer different views. We didn't do this for taking home here. You can see how, how there's larger stone here, and then we actually work with a lot of different landscape firms. Uh, so sometimes the scopes of work uh, are, are fairly clear as to where they start and stop. And you know we use much larger stone than what's commonly used. And uh, and then you have a, kind of some smaller stone over here. But it's kind of one of those things where, where you see the picture, you're like, it doesn't really work, but it's what it is. Entrance to a feature, there's a nice piece of stone set here uh, with the water passing under. This is a project on the Fox River uh, in Barrington. We have, uh, this This is away from the home, and, and when we talk about orientation and size and space, what we've done here is, uh, we didn't install this deck. This is a cantilevered steel deck that, that draws people right into the water feature and, and offers fantastic views. In addition to the deck, there's steppers incorporated throughout the water feature to allow visitors to, to get up close and, and wet. And, Interested. Uh, wow. wow. That's that same house? Yes, same house. Yeah, oh different view. Yeah, we were actually there at like 6 a.m. On, on September day. It was perfect. The, the fog came in and oh, it was, it was a good day to take pictures. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Here's one more. Oh, oh, wow. Where is that again? Barrington on the Fox River. If anyone's familiar with the, the ski jump, it's almost uh, oh, across the river from that. Wow. Let me see the house. Yeah. Uh, his house is fairly modest. Yeah, yeah. To be quite honest, it's, it's not. It, you know, he's just more. He, he wanted to have something, and he pulled some strings to get it installed in the Fox River. What kind of money did he pay you to do this? Uh, th this project, I want to say, was about 15 years old, and I want to say it was about 300,000 somewhere in that area. No, is that connected to the river though? Yes, it's an open system. Oh, it is. Yeah. So okay. when you're when you're on the river, because I live up that way, when you're on the river and you're boating through there, you can. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, it's nice. It's, it's, it's cool. So is this the river right here? No. No, no. no this no. this is this is a different project. Oh, okay. Yeah, this, this is the project, the, the larger uh, commercial development, kind of a shot of the falls, just giving you a, uh, an idea of of the stonework within the fall to make proper water movements, and that's very important, especially when you start to get bigger. So you, you, you don't want to see just a sheer drop. You want to move the water and, and offer different interests as far as... Are you always using real rock, or do you ever ma manufacture something that looks like rock? We're, like we're real stone. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 As far as the, the, the natural applications, yeah. It's, it's always, always real stone. So how was it dealing with the Army Corps of Engineers? <laughs> oh, yeah, they're a treat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, they're a lot. Yeah. There's, there's always a lot of hoops to go through, well, especially yeah. when you're talking about an open system with any uh, regulated body. Uh, this is that same shot. Dean, I thought you would appreciate these Christmas lights. Yeah. Yeah. Again, kind of one of those things that, yeah. uh, just a shot, same shot of the same uh, commercial development in the winter. Wow. Oh, piece, oh, yeah. piece of the stone related oh, to that. So, and that's, uh, some of those pieces were in excess of 30 tons. 
big, big pieces. This is a shot of that fountain from before, uh, the Portilla fountain. And he actually wanted this fountain bigger. We talked him down. <laughs> it's really talking client and downsizing, but uh, you know, it, again, it comes back to appropriately scaling relative to the home. And obviously, it's a significant home, but uh, you can only have so much fountain before it starts to run <laughs> up <through. laughs> And here's a look at, at just the hydraulics related to that during construction. Uh, because there was already an established granite drive to the residence, so we actually had to dig down where the fountain was going to be and then bore a hole underneath the driveway uh, large enough. I want to say that that hole was a 30 inch hole to accommodate all of the, uh, the plumbing. So much for the laser. Oh. <laughs> uh, here's a rooftop garden. Oh. This, uh, this overlooks Millennium Park, gorgeous view. Uh, and what we have is uh, uh, a Japanese themed garden, some hardscape uh, close up of the, the water feature. Again, what you see here is a, a very simple fountain where you don't need a lot of degrade to disguise uh, the water and, and have a, a nice natural feature. Beautiful. Swim ponds. This is actually a swim pond in Hinsdale, uh, and we've, we've seen a, a pretty substantial increase in demand uh, for swim ponds. Yeah, the, the swim ponds are, uh, yeah, there's there's a substantial interest for them. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of that is driven by misinformation that people think that they can have a swim pond for five or ten thousand dollars because the internet said so. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they might be able to do that, but that's uh, their definition of a swim pond is certain, certainly be different from ours. Only if you're a French model. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> how much would a swim pond like this be? Typically, uh, typically swim ponds are going to start between seventy-five thousand to. You know, this one would probably be more along the lines of two hundred thousand. Uh, is there gunite under there, or what's no, the? No, no. This is a lined application. Wow. Yeah. So, so what? Yeah, go ahead. Is it chemically treated, or how do you? Well, it's, it, we really rely on, on bacteria, beneficial bacteria, and, and proper water flows. Uh, the, as far as sterilization goes, this has an ozone system which sterilizes the water. So the water is crystal clear, and, and filtration. The, the amount of filtration really comes back to uh, the size of the, the pond and, and what you want to do. In this case, the owner has a significant koi collection, so there's there's a there's certainly a filtration impact related to that. I see. So like a pool starts at 70 or 60, same goes up to well yeah, it, over 200. Yeah, yeah so it, it's fair to say it's going to be more than a, more than a typical pool. Okay. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of different ways to build them as well. I got to, to sample the <laughs> with my son. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. <coughs> There's a, a look at the filtration. In, that's a detached garage, but it's uh, it's filtration. It's significant. You know, there's uh, to make the water crystal clear. I mean, it's it's as clear as a pool. Wow. But there's a lot of filtration there as well. And that's for the swim pond. Correct. Got it. Uh, this is a job we did in Burr Ridge. Just give you. An overall look at the, the preliminary design. Uh, a fairly large footprint, Colorado style home, uh, but what's important is the, the water feature relative to the home and, and the surrounding space in the backyard. Uh, the stream itself, I think, came out to be about 110 feet, uh, which it, it, it is a fair amount of stream, but you can see that it's, it, gets, oh. it gets lost pretty quickly. You can't even see the stream in this picture, and there's 110 feet of it. Did you guys do the landscape for this house? We did, yeah. We, we did the entire project. My son's got to take place in uh, a photo shoot. Yeah, so that's the stream in that house? Yes, yeah, this is the stream. I'll have another shot of the waterfall. A lot of, uh, another interesting part of this is the, the bluestone patio. A lot of these pieces themselves were in excess of 100 square feet. They were looking for a very natural feel to the patio, so we brought some bluestone in from, from Pennsylvania. It really gives it a, a really nice look. Example of some of the pieces. Got my wife into the shot as well. Oh, there yeah. you go. The wine. Yeah. Yes. There. Is this your house? The things I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> things I do for the job. Yeah. It's tough. It's like a tough life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was 90 degrees standing next to a fire, which I didn't appreciate. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's too bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's a shot of the waterfall. Oh. Fire fire pit. Pit. Oh yeah. my gosh. I didn't bring any shots in the front of the yard. There's, Angela did a fantastic job with that. And that was actually awarded the 
Judges Award, which is the highest uh, award given by the Illinois Landscape wow. Construction yes. Association. Uh, this is a job we actually are in the almost complete, have almost completed, I should say. Uh, we started last October. This is in Lake of the Ozarks. Um, open system again, pulling from the lake. Uh, even more regulation from, from the Fox River location as uh, this particular body of water is governed by Ameren because there's a dam there that pulls power. So not only is it, you know, the Army Corps, but it's also the, the Department of Energy, Ameren, Homeowners Association, there's the, any number of things that you have to go through to, to, Just to make sure. Just a fun thing. Yeah, a <laughs> yeah, lot, lot of planning, a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. And, and this, uh, this is covered with roughly 200 feet uh, of, of stream slash waterfall and pond. Wow. Is there Angelo's design here? Perspective. Uh, and this stone is actually a field stone that came out of Missouri, just a gorgeous stone. Beautiful. That's beautiful. And how do most of your clients find you? Uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a great range every year. I mean, it's referrals. We work with a, uh, any number of landscape firms uh, from Schmectig. I know we've, we've looked at a few projects with the guys and uh, Mariani. It's, it's, yeah, it's any number of things. But yeah, this particular client found us on the internet. Always a good spot to be found. Yes. So you should do some video marketing. Yes. You can't have enough video. <laughs> Shout out some stuff. On the sound, can you imagine? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 We're working on it. We're working on it. We're playing catch up, but yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a design uh, that we did in conjunction with uh, Craig Anderson. Uh, he he brought us in. There's a it's, it's a tea house in, in River Woods and. And Craig, was, Craig had a client that was looking for a very natural Japanese garden to surround his, his tea house. And there's the design. I'm going to take you in. We're going to start with shots coming from here and then we'll go around. And this was what, like a five-year project, Jason? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, essentially, there's, there's still work to be done. I mean, it's, it's ongoing. He's, he's a big fan of garden space, which we certainly appreciate. There's the entrance to the, to the tea house. The tea house will be right to the left of this picture. But in traditional, it's uh, like a pagoda. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I, I, there, there's a couple shots toward the end. In traditional Japanese culture: you wash your hands before entering the tea house. And what we've done there is we have a holder that's that's pulled out, uh, and there's no shots that really illustrate that. I apologize for that, but it's perfectly smooth, and they're almost like a sink. Coming around further, you start to see the stream coming around. This is an island located off the pond and the island, I mean, just uh, very detailed granite pegs coming around a little bit more. You can, you can see that the... It has, it's the coolest thing it has. You drop your feet, you like sit down, and your feet fall into the ground, and it's yeah. got a massage room. And yeah. And originally, we weren't allowed to do that, but we, we waited until the inspectors were out, and we said, because oh, yeah. you, can't, you can't have the water end here. You really can't have the water end here. That wouldn't... It, it wouldn't look right as far as the tea house is concerned. We need to bring the water underneath the deck to really give it the, the effect that it needs and deserves, to be quite honest, that tea houses. We've asked Craig to, to have an event there many times, so we're working on it. Yeah. Maybe you can work on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> the tea house is it, it's it's unbelievable. Where is that at? Riverwoods. River right down the yeah. So here's a shot from the, this would be the south. Uh, just a stepping stone pathway. There's, there's more water going this way, entering the tea house. Uh, there's the, the pathway in bloom, if you will. There's some lotus and lilies that surround it. Usually there's there's any number of flowers surrounding it. Just a, a, a gorgeous, any number of paths there. But offering a really nice pathway back. That's the inside. See how your feet fall in? That's like a... I think the next... Yeah. yeah. Shot of both doors open. There's a shot back toward the entrance. And what you can kind of see here is a, there, there's a soaker tub that also has a spigot similar to the entry spigot. Granite walls, but the details are gorgeous. Walls. Shot in the fall. And it's awesome. So we're gonna take a quick break, but before we do, Jason, so how what's a budget that we should consider to talk to you about? Because we don't want to like waste your time.
time. <laughs> we, we do. The, the, the range of installations vary greatly. I mean, we'll do simple installations that start at, at, at 5,000 and, and, and go up from there. Typically, when you start to talk about koi ponds, it's going to start in the, in the 20 to 30,000 range. And, and it's, these are all very loose figures, but uh, we're, we're very open to design. We certainly appreciate any referrals and, and work with many different clients. Uh, it's best to get in very early, and then you can start to start to design and, and project costs from there. Okay, so if anybody has a client, then I guess the first of all, call with Jason to get an idea yes, if it's feasible. Okay. Yeah. Typically, we do charge for consultations. If there's ever a referral, if we have a client, we won't charge. Just based on professional courtesy, right. obviously. Yeah, and I'm sure I'm sure most of you would want to be in that meeting anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So 